Okay. Uh, explore number three from parts of the atom. The essential question we're trying to answer, how can the quantity of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an atom be determined? Okay, so let's go and draw out our lines here. Let's see here. Monday, 10, 9, 23. Give ourselves plenty of room to write things down the margin. Central question. How can the quantity of protons neutrons and electrons in an atom in an atom be determined question mark Okay, so taking a look here, we've got um, counting protons, neutrons, and electrons. We have, uh, that looks like that's going to be the main, uh, the main topic of this. So, so Roman number one. Okay, Roman number one. Counting protons. Of course, those are the positive charges inside the nucleus of an atom. Counting neutrons. Those are the neutral, non charged particles inside the nucleus of an atom. And electrons. These are the negatively charged subatomic particles not in the nucleus they're outside of the nucleus and they actually account for a lar the largest part of an atom size is based on that okay so atomic number of an element I'm taking a look at paragraph number one equals the number of protons in the nucleus of the elements atoms okay we know that that's always good to review atomic number right that number that's that sign number sign right um, the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom okay so again if we were to take a look over here at our periodic table and i were to uh, pick number four here beryllium the atomic number is four that's the number of protons, number of positively charged subatomic particles in the nucleus. And I could go to um, silicon, number 14. There you go. That's, again, the atomic number. It's the number of protons. Now, um, it's worth noting, you can make the assumption that there's also going to be 14 neutrons and there's also going to be 14 electrons. Um, so let's just write that down. We can assume, assume that there are equal numbers of 
neutrons. If not an isotope, if not an isotope. And equal numbers of electrons. If it's not an ion. Okay. Um, so assuming that everything is stable and um, there's no charge, there should be equal numbers of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay. That's kind of what I want you to understand there. All right. Paragraph number two. And again, please make sure you're reading this stuff because you can see that I've already done a pre-read. I've already marked what I want to discuss with you. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that I know, so I'm not necessarily uh, highlighting everything. You need to make sure to read everything, okay? The number of electrons in a neutral atom equals the number of protons in the atom's nucleus. We said that. Check. We just talked about that. This only applies, however, if the atom has not lost or gained any electrons. Okay. If an atom loses electrons, then and it's no longer uh, uh, they're no longer canceling each other out, uh, meaning they don't have the same number of positives and negatives. If it loses electrons, it's going to become more positive. And if it gains more electrons, it's going to become more negative. Okay, and that's where you get your, your ions. Okay, recall that each proton and neutron has a mass of about 1 AMU. That's probably important just to remind ourselves of that, okay? Letter B. Protons and neutrons... Uh, have approximately a mass, this means approximately, that little symbol there, okay, have approximately a mass of one atomic mass unit. That's what that means. Maybe we should write that down. Atomic mass unit, okay, AMU. A M U. Okay. Because electrons and electron cloud have very little mass, the entire mass of the atom can be considered equal to the mass of all the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus. Okay. Electron mass is negligible. Remember, it's so small, it doesn't really matter. Negligible. Therefore, mass equals the protons plus the neutrons. Okay. The approximate, so now we're moving down here. Oh, sorry, clear the uh, screen there. The approximate mass of the stable carbon atom is therefore 12 AMU. This atom has a mass number of 12. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and just say here, example. Oh, I'm not sure what just happened there. Um, hmm. Where did that go? Sorry about that. Let me pause this. Okay, so sorry about that little break there. I had to figure out how to clear my screen. Uh, so let's take a look at this example right here. The uh, This example right here. The approximate mass of the stable carbon atom. So there's a carbon, which is letter C. It's stable. Okay, so we can make some assumptions um, about it having the same number, therefore, uh, the equal protons and neutrons. Uh, 
So if we come over here to our periodic table and we take a look at carbon, here it is. Uh, clear that screen. There you go, carbon, number six. Uh, this number six tells us that we have six protons. And remember, for all, if, if you have a stable uh, atom, it's not an isotope, and it does not have uh, a charge, you can assume that that six represents the same for protons, neutrons, and electrons. All right, so if it has six protons, it has six neutrons, all right? So here we go. Uh, C6 has six protons, six neutrons. And because it does not have a charge, it does not say that it's an ion, we can also say it has six electrons. And from here, you remember that the, uh, the mass, the atomic mass unit, the relative mass, um, AMU is going to equal the six plus the six. That's the protons plus the neutrons, the protons plus the neutrons. And that's going to equal 12 AMU. And we don't add electrons because they're negligible. They're so small, right? Okay. And that's exactly what this paragraph said. Uh, the approximate mass of the stable carbon atom is therefore 12 AMU. This atom has a mass number of 12. So 12 AMU, this is the mass number. Okay. There we go. All right. The mass number expresses the total number of particles in the nucleus of an atom. That's right, the protons and the neutrons. The total number of particles in the nucleus. That's your protons plus neutrons, right? Because protons and neutrons are always present in their entirety, the mass number is always a whole number. Okay. So AMU is represented... as a whole number. That's important because um, when you take look at the periodic table, you'll see that there's a different type of number on the bottom. And that is not a whole number. Uh, that's the average atomic mass of carbon. And we're going to be discussing that possibly in this explorer and certainly in the next explorer as well. Um, that has to do with in nature, you find uh, all the different forms of an element, all of its isotopes. And so you have to, when you figure out uh, the average atomic mass for all the isotopes, you're going to get a decimal number, okay? Unlike this atomic mass unit where you get a whole number, okay? All right. Note that the number of protons and neutrons are not always equal. Yes, we know that. That's, um, that's what we refer to as isotopes, right? Isotopes. Um, the neutron, neutrons can vary. So take a look here. Um, Okay, and notice here we got this word isotope here. Hydrogen 1 has an atomic number of 1. That's the proton. This is the proton. And hydrogen 1 has a mass number of 1. This would be your uh, protons plus neutrons. So in this case here, there's no neutron for hydrogen 1. And I think we know that. Right. If we go back to um, this hydrogen one here, H one, uh, there is only a proton. So this has. Sorry, my dog is running around in circles all of a sudden here in the house and making a lot of noise. Um, hydrogen one, only a proton, no neutrons. Okay. 
So let's go back and take a look here because we're on explore number three. And we have helium number three. Notice that the helium three has two protons. It has a mass number of three. Therefore, it has one neutron. One plus two equals three. Carbon 12 has six protons. Remember, atomic number is just the protons. Okay, that's all it is. The mass number is the protons plus the neutrons. So if carbon 12 has six protons and it has a mass number of 12, what's 12 minus six? 12 minus six equals six. So this has six neutrons. Same thing for nitrogen 14. Okay, this is, these numbers here tell you basically the mass, the mass number. So if I have seven protons, atomic number is seven, 14 minus seven, 14 minus seven equals seven neutrons, okay? Same thing here, oxygen 16. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. If it, oxygen has an atomic number of eight, where are we getting these numbers from? Well, you just look on the periodic table here and there's oxygen right there. Oxygen has eight, that's its atomic number. So eight protons, 16 is the mass number. So that's, um, so if you take 16 minus eight, so 16, um, minus eight, that would give us the number of neutrons. So we'd have eight neutrons. And you can just go right on down and do that for all of these, okay? So these are all isotope numbers. When they, when you have, um, how do you know you're dealing with an isotope? You take a look at this part here, that dash one, that dash three, that dash 12. This all tells you that these are isotopes, okay? Meaning that you might have a fluorine 18 and a fluorine 20. I'm just using those as examples, but that's what that iron dash 56, silver dash 108, these are isotopes, okay? All right. So maybe we should write that down here. Isotopes are um, are indicated as follows. The element name element symbol and then followed by a dash, followed by a dash, and then this is going to be the, uh, the mass number. The mass number. So we could say hydrogen dash one. We could say and I'm just looking at that chart there, helium dash three, okay? These are how you know that you're talking about an isotope, okay? All right. If the mass number for an element is given, the number of neutrons in its atom can be calculated by subtracting the atomic number from the mass number. That's kind of what we were doing on that chart, but doesn't hurt to actually write this down, okay? So how to calculate the mass number, or to calculate the, sorry, the number of neutrons in an atom. use the following equation. And our equation is the mass number
minus the atomic number and that's going to give you the it's going to equal the number of neutrons okay and that's kind of what we're doing up here we were taking the mass number so in this case, three, if I were to use this, the mass number minus the atomic number, two, gave you one neutron, right? The mass number, 12, minus the atomic number of six gives you six neutrons. The mass number of 14 minus the seven protons is going to give you seven neutrons. So we were basically doing that formula, okay? And so they give you an example here. Uh, gold 197, you know that that's an isotope, right? Isotope has a mass number of 197. That 197 is going to be protons plus neutrons, right? And an atomic number of 79. This is your protons, right? Which means it has 118 neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. Well, that's right. 197. This is your mass number. That mass number. Minus... The 79, which is the atomic number, and that's going to give you 118, that number of neutrons. So they just gave you kind of, they just worked that example for you. Hydrogen 1, again, this is an isotope. You should be recognizing that. isotope, right, has an atomic number of one, that's the protons, and a mass number of one, this is your protons plus your neutrons, so the number of neutrons in the hydrogen atom is calculated to be zero. That's right, one for the atomic number, mass number, in this case it does not have any neutrons, right, so it's just going to be one minus one equals zero. Hydrogen is the only element with atoms that contain no neutrons in the stable state. Okay, that's probably worth, and we referred to that in uh, your Explore One notes, okay? But let's write that down, okay? Hydrogen is the only element with atoms that contain no neutrons in the in the stable state. Okay, I just hand wrote that, but it's basically the same thing as this right here. Okay, this is what we're talking about. Okay. Okay, um, let's see, we're just about finished here. The atomic number and the mass number are used in symbols that represent the isotopes of all the elements using the following form. So we've got this A, Z, X kind of form here. Um, here, the X represents any element. The Z represents the atomic number for the isotope. And A represents the mass number. So, for example, the isotope described above, gold-197, would be represented by the following symbol. So, let's just, uh, we'll go ahead and, how do we want to put this down into our notes here? We're going to make this... Um, Letter C, okay? This will be letter C. Um, nomenclature. 
this is kind of like a, a fancy word for saying naming things. Okay, so if we use the standard form X, can be any element. This could be your element symbol. And then you have A and Z. And here they're saying that the Z represents the atomic number. Okay, that's going to be um, the number of protons. And A represents the mass number. So in this case, A is going to be the bigger number because this is going to be your protons plus your neutrons. And Z, your atomic number, would be the smaller number because this is just going to be your protons. Okay. So if we take a look here at uh, the gold example, we can see that we have, uh, let's see here, where did my tools go? I can get back there. Well, oh. can I erase that? Clear screen. And the one ninety seven that represents your mass number, and your seventy nine represents your atomic number, and then AU this represents the this is the symbol for gold. Okay, AU. So that's kind of what that's there, okay? Uh, let's see here. All right, the symbols for other isotopes of gold would have the same atomic number, but different mass numbers. And why would they have different mass numbers? Because different numbers of neutrons. Okay, we're talking about isotopes of gold right there, okay? Okay, well, geez, did we get this all done? Hopefully so, huh? It's a lot of stuff that we always have to think through. Uh, let's see, keep on going through here. Yep, we did get it through. All right, um, as always, I, I need to try to stress with you guys, uh, try to draw a, um, a summary sentence. So this is your Cornell notes, right? Hopefully I'm drawing my lines here nice and straight. Oh, look at that. That's pretty darn good.